my name is sadanwar and i am triple science coach i teach chemistry and other sciences as well this is free class as you guys know this is third free class of the month and you can also contact me for one on one lesson and let's continue what we were discussing in previous class anybody else can share me what we discussed in previous class anybody among you inform me what we discussed in previous class you know any any idea what we discussed in previous class in previous class we discussed how to arrange electrons open your notebook and do write these things very good you know very good how to arrange electron in previous class we discussed arrangement arrangement of electron let's continue in this class we will learn few tricks and we will learn how to use periodic table for in the arrangement of electrons let me share a periodic ta periodic table here can you can you guys see this periodic table here at screen i think now you can see this periodic table here at screen yes you can see what periodic table is basically what periodic table is periodic table is just a page where elements are arranged according to their atomic number there are two types of arrangement of elements in periodic table one is vertical arrangement you can see my hand this is vertical this is vertical this vertical arrangement of elements in periodic table this is vertical arrangement of elements this is vertical arrangement of elements this is vertical straight standing vertical arrangement of elements we call it a group so write this line vertical arrangement of element is called group vertical vertical arrangement vertical arrangement of elements in periodic table is called groups so in periodic table there are basically different groups let me put their number i say this is group 1 this is group 2 this is group 3 probably in diff in your periodic table or in different periodic table sometimes they mention this is tertiary group but say this is third group because here we are gonna learn few tricks group 3 this is group 4 this is group 5 this is group 6 this is group 7 this is group 8 and this is this is online lessons you can ask me question anytime you can unmute yourself and you can ask me question so this is group 8 similarly in periodic table there are horizontal arrangement look at my hand this is horizontal arrangement so this horizontal arrangement of element is called period so in periodic table this is first period this is second period this is third period this is fourth period this is fifth period this is sixth period this is seventh period so the horizontal arrangement of elements in periodic table is called period right guys no important trick is group number we need to learn what group number tells us and what period number tells us remember guys group number group number tells us about group number tells us about number of electron group number tells us about number of electron in outermost shell 
group number tells us about number of electron in outermost shell Re write this sentence in your notebook group number tells us about number of electron in outermost shell and what period number tells us any anyone have anyone anyone among you have an idea what period number tells us period number period number tells us about very good very good sanvi very good period number tells us about total number of shell total number of shell we can say total number of shell is equal to period number number of electron in outermost shell is equal to group number so this is periodic table and you can take picture of this periodic table we are going to use this periodic table now one two three i am erasing it and opening the whiteboard so my friends this is sodium and if you see in periodic table the symbol of sodium is 11 its atomic number is uh, the symbol of sodium is na its atomic number is 11 and group of sodium is 1 and period of sodium is 3 as period number of sodium is 3 so how many shell i need to draw for sodium as period number of sodium is 3 so i need to draw 3 shell for sodium how many shell i need to draw for sodium three shell why because period number of sodium is three and period number tells us the total number of shell the group number is one it means in the outer shell of sodium i can put one electron atomic number of sodium is 11 it means sodium has 11 proton and 11 electron from this 11 electrons i have arranged one electron in the outermost shell so from this 11 electrons i have arranged one electron so remaining electron is 10 and i now in the first shell we can put two electron in the second shell we can put eight electron two in the first shell eight in the second shell so this is the quickest way of arranging electron this is the quickest way of arranging electrons. This is the quickest way of arranging electrons. Okay, now this is chlorine. Anybody else can tell me by using periodic table, how many shell should I draw for chlorine? First of all, use open your periodic table and try to figure out the group number of chlorine and period number of chlorine. You can tell me in chat. You have know, any idea what should be the group number of chlorine? What should be the period number of chlorine? If you open periodic table, you can see mass good good mass mass good group number is seven and period number of chlorine is three remember guys period number of chlorine is three so in chlorine i need to draw three shells one two three in previous class, we have learned how to arrange electron in detail. In this class, I am sharing with you guys few interesting tricks. By using, by learning these tricks and by utilizing these tricks, 
you will be able to do arrangement of electron within 30 second believe me my friends believe me atomic number of chlorine is 17 it means for chlorine i need to arrange 17 electron and group number of chlorine is 7 remember group number tells us number of electron in outermost shell if group number is 7 so i need to put seven electron in the outermost shell of chlorine as you can see i am putting the seven electron in the outermost shell of chlorine so total electron is 17 and from these 17 electrons i have kept seven electron in the outermost shell so remaining electron is 10 and i now in the first shell we can put two electron in the second shell we can put eight electron so this is the arrangement of our chlorine now just do one more example then we jump to the next topic and this is potassium this is potassium this is potassium its symbol is capital k its atomic number is 19 so guys So, Mariam, would you like to tell me the group number of potassium and period number of potassium? Yes, please. Anybody else? Group number of potassium and open you do you have oh, you in chemistry class it's really better if you open periodic table if you keep periodic table with you mariam would you like to and share with us what is the group number for potassium what is the group no yeah very good very good very good are you very good so the group number of potassium is 1 and period number of potassium is Four period number of potassium is four. Very good, very good. Excellent, excellent. So it means for potassium, I need to draw how many shell? Four shell because period number is equal to number of shell. So for potassium, I am drawing these four shells. And in case of potassium, atomic number is nineteen. it means i have to arrange 19 electron in a quickest way the group number is 1 so just blindly put one electron in the outermost shell of potassium now see among total you have 19 electrons and from these 19 electrons we have arranged one electron in the outermost shell it means remaining electron is 18 remaining electron is 18 total potassium has 19 electrons and from these 19 electrons we have arranged one electron in the outermost shell so the remaining electron is 18 and we now i can put two electron in the first shell and second shell accommodate eight electron so i can put eight electron in the second shell it means in the first shell of potassium i have kept two electron in the second shell of potassium i have kept eight electron and in the outermost shell which is fourth shell i have kept one electron so how many electron should i put in the third shell total 19 electron potassium atom has total 19 electron and group number is 1 for potassium atom so i have cap to one electron in the outermost shell because i now group number tells me how many electron should i put in the outermost shell so remaining so in the first shell i when i cap to one electron in the outermost shell the remaining is 18 and from this 18 i have arranged two in the first shell i have arranged eight electron in the second shell so what do you expect very good alina very good sanvi in the third shell i need to put eight electron so this is the electronic configuration in a quickest way now okay come to the important topic that is bonding first of all there is a question comes 
in mind and comes in exam as well. Vishana Sharaf good. So question is why atoms makes bond? First of all, we need to learn why atoms makes bond. Why atom makes bond? Answer of this question is you guys now, you guys know one thing that we a human being. We are human being. We want stability. We want financial stability. We want emotional stability. The question is why atoms makes bond? I am going to explain the answer of that question. Why atoms makes bond? The answer is, you know, we are a human being. We want stability. We want what kind of stability usually? We want financial stability. We want emotional stability. And for financial stability, we do jobs. We establish businesses. We connect. We make connection with other people. We make bond with other people. Bond is actually connection. For emotional stability, we make friends. We make friends who have parents, brothers, sisters, siblings, relatives. They, they give us usually emotional stability. For financial stability, we do jobs, we establish business, we, we make connection with other people. Similarly, atoms makes bond because atoms want stability. Atoms want stability. Everyone in this world wants stability. Atoms also want stability. So atoms makes bond. One atom connect with another atom. Very important topic which we are going to discuss, my friends. Good. Atoms make bond. Atoms want to achieve stability. So, scientists have observed one thing that those atoms that have eight electron in their outermost shell such atoms are by default stable. We can say they are naturally stable. For example, neon. Atomic number of neon is 10. Group number of neon is 8. Period number of neon is 2. So if I, if I arrange number of electrons for neon, I need to put eight electron in the outermost shell because group number of neon is eight. Total neon has 10 electrons. So I will put two electron in the first shell. Remember guys, those atoms that have eight electron in its outermost shell, those atoms that have eight electron in their outermost shell, they are stable. And if an atom is stable, they do, they do not make bond. They do not react. Stability means less reactivity. Stability means less reactivity. The question is why atoms makes bond? The answer is atoms makes bond to achieve stability. And what is stability criteria? What does stability mean for atoms? For atoms, stability means atom must have eight electron in its outermost shell. It has been observed that those atoms that keep eight electron in their outermost shell, whatever the outermost shell is, those atoms that keep eight electron in their outermost shell, they are stable. While rest of the atoms that don't have eight electron they want to have, they wish to have eight electron in their outermost shell to achieve stability. So there is a rule which we call octet rule. Octet rule. Octet rule says, octet rule is one of stability rule. Octet rule says to achieve stability atom wish to have eight electron in their outermost shell to achieve to achieve stability 
to achieve stability atoms wish atom wish to have eight electron in their outer most shell means if an atom if an atom does not have eight electron in its outer most shell if an atom does not have eight electron in its outer most shell that atom is not stable and to achieve stability atom wish to have eight electron in their outer most shell this rule is called octet rule there is another rule which we call duplet rule duplet rule duplet rule remember guys the term octet means eight the term duplet means two there are few atoms very few just two three there are few atoms they don't they don't want eight electron in their outermost shell for stability they just want two electron in their outermost shell for stability let me write what a duplet rule says to achieve stability to achieve stability few atoms very few few atoms few atoms wish few atoms wish to have wish to have two electron in their outer in their outer most shell there are few atoms in periodic table to achieve stability they just wish for two electron in the outermost shell while we can say 99.999% atoms they satisfy octet rule they wish to attain eight electron in their outermost shell outermost shell to achieve stability while there are few atoms they just want two electron in their outermost shell now the point is how can i figure out that this atom will follow octet rule and of stability how how can we figure out that this atom will follow octet octet rule of stability and this atom will follow duplet rule of stability how can i figure out the point is remember guys very important point i am going to share with i am going to share with you my friends very important point those atoms whose atomic number those atoms whose atomic number you can write this in your notebook those atoms whose at, whose atomic number is equal to 3 or less than 3 such atoms will follow duplet rule let me write those atoms those atoms whose atomic number those atoms whose atomic number those atoms whose atomic number equal to 3 equal to 3 or less than 3 or less than 3 such atoms follow duplet rule such atoms such atoms follow such atoms follow duplet rule and what does duplet rule says duplet rule says to achieve stability atoms wish to have two electron in their outermost shell so my friend anybody among you can share with us that if by using periodic table can share with us that by using periodic table 
which atom open period open your periodic table and try to answer in chat that which what you say what you think that among different elements which one which element follow duplet rule sanvi you are right yeah one is helium jumna you are right sanvi one is lithium yeah mars one is hydrogen so very good guys if anyone among you have any question in mind don't sit silent this is live class you can share with me we all are passenger of same boat we are all we all are learners so don't hesitate you can ask me at any time so guys hydrogen lithium helium just these three atoms they follow duplet rule means hydrogen and lithium and helium they want two electron only in their outermost shell while all other elements of periodic table they want eight electron in their outermost shell so as i have written that the atoms whose atomic number equal to 3 or less than 3 such atoms follow duplet rule for octet rule remember guys those atoms whose atomic number is greater than 3 such atoms follow octet rule those atoms in which atomic number is greater than 3 such atoms follow octet rule if atomic number is greater than 3 such atoms follow octet rule now i am going to turn page i will share all these pages in my whatsapp group and facebook page as well so my friend now it's time to discuss few example like this is sodium its symbol is allow its symbol is an a atomic number is 11 group number of sodium is 1 period number of sodium is 3 period number of sodium is 3 it means i need to draw three shell for sodium so i will draw three shell for sodium group number is 1 it means i need to put one electron in the outermost shell total electron is 11 i have kept one electron in the outermost shell in the first shell i will put two electron in the second shell i will put eight electron now the question is what do you think about sodium is sodium stable or not is sodium happy is sodium stable or not? no mass good anyone else Ahmed, Ahmedu, Ahmedu, what you say? Bilal, you are right. Alina, you are right. Yumna, you are right. Siram, you are right. Sodium is not stable. Why sodium is not stable? The the ion. Very good. Very good. Yes, sodium is not stable. Bilal, Umar, excellent. It has a spare electron. the shine is sure of good good so guys sodium has outer shell of sodium has just one electron and we now octet rule says to achieve stability atom must have eight electron in its outermost shell so sodium has just one electron sodium is not stable leave this story of sodium here let's discuss the story of chlorine chlorine has three shell as we discussed in the beginning of this class in the beginning of this lesson we have discussed right outer shell of chlorine i need to put two ele uh, seven electron like this 1 2 3 4 5 and 1 inner shell i will put and in the second shell i will put it we have discussed this thing in the beginning of today's lesson so what do you say about chlorine outer shell of chlorine has seven electron is chlorine stable or not what do you say mas good vishan good sir sri ram good sodium is not stable alina good 
because sodium has seven electron and we know octet rule says atom must have eight electron in its outermost shell so, so it means sodium need one electron sodium need one electron sodium need one more electron to satisfy its octet rule what uh, sorry chlorine sorry sorry chlorine Chlo right now chlorine has seven electron in its outermost shell and sodium wants one more uh, sorry chlorine want one more electron to satisfy its octet rule what about this sodium sodium has just one electron sodium does not want one electron in its outermost shell sodium want eight electron in its outermost shell one can think that so one can think that uh, so if, if somehow sodium atom can manage to borrow seven electron from any other atom then sodium can satisfy octet rule but this is practically not possible remember guys metals never accept electron we say metals love to donate electron metals love to donate electron metals love to donate electron so sodium this one electron is extra electron this one electron is extra electron for sodium because sodium do not want one electron in its outermost shell sodium wants eight electron sodium do not want one electron this one electron is a kind of headache for sodium this one electron is not letting sodium to live a stable life. So what sodium will do? Sodium will kick out this one electron and sodium will completely transfer this one electron to chlorine because chlorine is needy of one electron. When sodium will completely transfer its one electron to chlorine, right now chlorine, previously chlorine had seven, now chlorine has eight electrons. As soon as sodium completely transfer its one electron, this electron will be disappear. This shell will be disappear. And now the outer shell is this one in case of sodium. Now the outer shell is this one. And you guys see, you guys can see uh, now there is eight electron in the outer shell. So sodium is stable, chlorine is stable. But yes, both are stable now. As you know, sodium has lost one electron sodium compl has completely transferred its one electron to chlorine remember the atom that has lost one electron that has that donated one electron that atom gets plus charge while you can you guys can see chlorine has chlorine has gained one electron so the atom that has gained one electron, that atom gets negative charge. And a bond will develop between these atoms. That bond is called ionic bond, ionic bond, ionic bond. So what is ionic bond? Let me, let me, let me share its definition. The bond formed between atoms in which one atom completely transfers its electron to the other atom. That bond is called ionic bond. The bond formed between atoms in which one atom has completely transferred its electron to another atom. That bond is called ionic bond. So in today's lesson, what we have discussed in today's lesson, we have discussed few tricks to arrange electrons quickly by using periodic table. Then we discuss the concept of bonding, why atoms make bond, what is what is stability criteria for atoms. Then we discussed one example. No, Dishan, it cannot transfer more than one electron. And in its time to say goodbye. In the next class, we will discuss ionic bond and covalent bond in more detail. I suggest you guys do join the next lesson and 
come in the class in the time 6 p.m. UK time. You can contact me as well if you have any queries. In the next lesson, we will discuss ionic bond and covalent bond with examples, with tricks, and with detail. Thank you so much for joining this class. Now, if you have any question, it's time. Just video is just about to finish. So this is. Anybody else want to share anything?